Welcome to my video on how to grow the sweetest strawberries. But first I'd like to tell you a story. A few years ago my wife and I went on a trip to California and we just happened to stop by a roadside market that was selling some strawberries. And when I tasted them, I could not believe the levels of sugars in those berries. Now, I've tasted strawberries all over the state of Michigan over about a 30 year career working for Michigan State University, but I had never tasted berries that sweet. So I decided to do some research on what are the factors that would help you to grow the sweetest strawberries. Fruit sweetness is measured by the BRICS level, which is a measure of the total soluble solids, mainly sugars, present in the fruit. For strawberries, a BRICS level of 10 is okay, 14 is good, but 16 is great. When you look in a catalog or online for the description of a particular cultivars, they're not listed by their BRICS level. What you normally will see is the sweetest cultivars will have a high sugar content label on them. Some of the sweetest cultivars I've been able to find include AC Windy, Albion, Alpine Strawberries, Delice, Dar Select, Mara Du Bois, and Sweet Charlie. Whatever cultivar you decide to grow, be sure that it's adaptable for your particular area. In order to produce the maximum level of sugars, full sunlight is essential. Any shade will decrease the ability of the plant to produce carbohydrates, which are sugars, and they're produced by a process called photosynthesis. Although it's not something you can control, the more bright sunny days and cool nights you have, the greater the potential for developing high levels of sugars in the berries. Strawberries perform best on sandy loam soils with supplemental compost. The organic matter level minimum for your soil should be 2-3%. to Strawberries prefer slightly acidic soil, although they will grow on a range of 5.3 to 6.8, with the ideal being about 6.2 on a mineral soil. They also require good drainage, which means no standing water around the plants. Less than ideal growing conditions will affect the accumulation of sugar in the berries. I plant my strawberries on black landscape fabric, and I remove all the runners. This also helps to control weeds, which also compete for water and nutrients. The best way to determine the nutrient levels in your soil is to take a soil test. Contact your local university extension office by searching online under the county name. For example, for me, it would be Eaton County, Michigan State University Extension. If I lived in Dallas, Texas, I would search Dallas County Extension. They will provide you with the process for soil testing in your area. When you receive the results back, recommendations will be made as to what nutrients need to be added to your soil. Here are some general ideal soil levels for key nutrients. For phosphorus, 30 to 40 parts per million. And if you want uh, pounds per acre, just double these values. Potassium should be between 100 and 130 parts per million to be in the optimal levels. Magnesium should be 40 to 80 parts per million. And if you need micronutrients, the two most likely ones you'll need is boron and zinc. And boron should be between 0.75 and 1 parts per million, while zinc should be 5 to 6 parts per million. In order to achieve maximum sweetness, strawberry plants need more potassium when they're setting fruit. One source I looked at recommends applying high potassium fertilizer just as the flowers begin to show. Apply once again two weeks later and again another two weeks later. But according to Cornell University, if you apply the recommended amount of potassium to the soil based on the soil test results before planting, additional applications are not likely to benefit the plants. I suspect other land-grant universities like Michigan State will also agree. Biostimulants may also play a beneficial role in achieving sweeter berries and healthier plants. Biostimulants are any substance or microorganism applied to plants or the soil with the aim to enhance nutrition efficiency, stress tolerance, and crop quality traits, regardless of the nutrient status of the plants. They play multiple roles by increasing the availability of nutrients 
improving nutrient water absorption, and protecting plants from harmful organisms. Did you know that strawberries are about 91% water? The amount of water applied to the crop can affect fruit quality as well as yield. Plants need about one to two inches per week, and too much leads to nutrition leaching, diseased plants, and yield reduction. Too little can cause drought stress and a loss of production. Some research has shown that slight water stress can increase fruit sugar content, but too much water can dilute the flavor of the berries. When berries are harvested can play a critical role in sweetness. For the highest levels of sugar, leave the fruit on until it fully develops its color. This will require checking berries daily and picking only those that are shiny and fully red. If you wait too long, the fruit develops an off flavor as it begins to ferment. Well, I hope these suggestions have been helpful and I also hope that you're able to grow the sweetest berries in your neighborhood and you're very satisfied with your crop. This is Gary, that's my information for today, and I hope that you will continue to tune in. See you later.